Hey there, welcome back to No Rest Be Required. Hope you're doing well. Tonight is pizza night. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna make for you a basil and chicken uh, pizza. It, uh, it's awesome, no tomato sauce at all, but the same great cheese. Our basil or our pesto is actually gonna be the sauce. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to make it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to blanch basil. Now, this is, uh, this is what we're gonna use for our pesto, but uh, you know, blanching is a technique that we should all learn, pick up. Here I've obviously got a big bunch of herbs, and you can do this with a bunch of different, uh, different herbs. I've got a pot of boiling salted water, and literally, you just drop that right in there, give it a little stir, and what the blanching is gonna do, it's actually gonna cook the leaves, and believe it or not, although the, um, it's sitting in water, the blanching of the cooking is actually gonna draw water out of the cells of the, uh, of the basil, and really just kinda concentrate the flavor break down those uh, the cell structures and give it uh, or take away some of that raw taste. It really only takes you know 35 to 50 or so seconds, definitely under a minute to do a blanch like this provided you got the water nice and hot which you should do. And then um, once you get it done we're gonna remove it, strain it and then uh, run it under ice cold water to really set that bright green color. If you just kinda take it out um, it'll turn a dull kind of um, uh, you know military green puke green, which isn't uh, which isn't any good. All right, let's go ahead and make our basil. I've got my uh, my blanched spinach right here. I'm just going to um, you know actually I don't even need to drop it up or chop it up. You can um, kind of tear it up a little bit um, if you got some of the thicker stems. You know beating beating those up a little might uh, might help a little bit but you don't need to do a whole lot to it. I've also got my, uh, my toasted pine nuts. Um, I'm gonna use, what is that, half a handful? Um, probably a tablespoon and a half, at least to start with. I've got a few in reserve. Um, I'm also gonna add some Parmesan cheese. This is, um, again, probably two good tablespoons there. And then we'll hit it with some olive oil. A good amount, so the olive oil, plus a little bit of water is going to provide the blender with enough liquid to actually spin and really combine all these ingredients. We also want to season a little bit with salt and with pepper. And then I also like to add just a little bit of lemon juice to mine. You know, really half a teaspoon or so. Certainly to start with, you're not looking for um, obviously a lemon tasting sauce, but I find the acid from the, um, from the lemon helps keep everything a little bit greener. And, uh, and I also like the, uh, the brightness that the acidity gives the, uh, gives the pesto. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulsing this. And let everything just kind of come together and form that nice paste. Once it does, we'll, uh, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so we've gotten a nice little grate down. Now, first thing you want to do, you may have to uh, you may have to scrape down the sides if um, if you find it sticking around, but you want to give it a little taste. See if it needs anything. This actually it tastes pretty good um, as it is. I don't know if you noticed when I stir it up. I actually think this um, this pesto is a little bit um, looser than what I would normally expect. I must have uh, you know, just put in a little bit extra water. But, you know, not a huge deal. We can, uh, we can deal with that. One, it'll still be great if you use it as is. Two, if you add a few more nuts and maybe a little bit more cheese, that will uh, that'll help thicken it up. And finally, when I tasted it, I, uh, it, it was great, but I found it could use still a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of that bite, a little bit more acid. So I'm going to touch it up with a little more lemon and then we're going to go ahead and just blend it up again. Okay, pesto is done. You want to, uh, of course, give it another taste. Make sure, make sure it uh, meets your approval. This one does. So, as I said in the beginning, I messed up on my basil. Um, I forgot to add any garlic. Now, normally I would chop a clove of garlic, throw it in the blender, blend it all together. That obviously gives a nice garlicky flavor to the, uh, to the dish. But, since I forgot it, what are you going to do? You can do a couple things. Um, one, forget it. Um, just go ahead and serve it as is. It'll still be delicious. Option two, 
we know how to mince garlic. That's on the site as well. I've just got a, a clove here that I finely minced and uh, just put it in afterwards. You know, you can even add this back to your blender. Throw in a clove of garlic and get it in there. I, uh, I've already put the blender away, so, you know, don't worry about it. Don't tell anybody. Nobody's going to know other than you. It'll be okay, totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make our basil pesto or pesto and chicken pizza here. I've got my uh, dough rolled out just like I always roll out my dough. And my, uh, my pesto that we made earlier is just going to go right on top exactly the same as we would do a normal tomato sauce. I might go, you know, maybe just slightly heavier with the sauce just because it's a, uh, I find it's a little subtler um, than, uh, than tomato sauce. So it can, it, can, uh, it can use a little bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and put down our layer of mozzarella. Spread nice and evenly throughout. And then, um, you know, one of the cheeses I frequently use to kind of mix things up and spice things up a little bit is, uh, is some Fontina cheese, which is exactly what I've got here. So I'm going to use that, you know, again, as an accent, not really as the full, um, as the full cheese or, the, or the, the, the main cheese on the pizza. It's really just a, uh, a flavor component. And then I'm going to add my chicken, just, uh, you know, pieces, kind of nicely diced. This is chicken that um, I had cooked earlier and, uh, and simply just diced up. We spread that around, make sure you get a nice, good distribution. Now, the final thing I'm going to do is, um, remember the pesto had some basil in it. I reserved a couple of the basil leaves. So, you know, why not just take those leaves, give it a little chop, spread those around on the pizza as well, just as a little bit of accent and a, a little additional flavor. Randomly spread out. And then remember it also, our pesto has pine nuts in it. I reserved some of those pine nuts. And again, just spread those guys all around. And this is, um, you know, this is a little bit of the wow factor. People be impressed. You got whole whole nuts on there. It looks kind of cool. And, uh, and it's not any additional work. So I've got this on my board. Let's go ahead. I'm going to throw it in the, uh, in the oven, 500 degree oven or as high as you can go. And uh, it'll probably take 10 minutes or so to cook off. Okay, so we just pulled our chicken pesto pizza out of the oven. It's, uh, it's absolutely perfect, nice and, uh, nice and golden brown on top, crust is nice and crispy. You want to make sure you let it sit for uh, five or six minutes on that pizza stone so that the, um, so the toppings kind of settle, you don't kill the roof of your mouth. And uh, I think it helps get the crust a little bit crispier as well. This is uh, it's an absolutely awesome pizza. I hope you try it, and I'll see you next time on No Recipe Required.